Pierre Nantem, thank you very much for, for, for joining us here. Um, the reason why we were keen to bring you on was to talk about digital transformation. And the reason why Accenture is interesting in this respect is because, firstly, you advise people about this, but you yourself have been through it. And in my very layman's version of it, you've had sort of two and a half of versions of that. One was, I suppose, 15 years ago, you seemed like a very American company. There were all these Indian ones coming for you, like Ypro and things like that. And then you changed into this much more multinational one. And then you had the whole problem of the cloud, which you embraced. And now you've got AI. But the, I look at this audience as your customers, so to speak. What, <laughs> what, what are the main things that you can learn from what has happened at Accenture that they could apply to their businesses? Yeah, I mean, what you can learn is, I mean, first, you clearly need to understand your industry very deeply and the underlying trends. And for us, the major fight we had to engage in was the fight against commoditization. There is nothing worse than commoditization because commoditization is destroying value. Certainly, your services are commoditized. The price are going down, the margin going down. You need to scale. The price going down, the margin going down. So as this group is all about envisioning the future, I think in envisioning the future, make sure that what it is you're building in terms of new services are indeed uh, relevant to your markets. Second, highly differentiated, so you can avoid as much as could do uh, uh, commoditization, and of course you're competitive, uh, uh, I mean, to grow uh, and win in the market. So for us, it's all started when I was on post in 11, understanding that a significant part of our business, uh, the outsourcing, to be clear, was at the point of the, uh, uh, I mean, the value curve, if you will, yes. or the S curve, at the point of commoditization. And so we needed to pivot to higher value services. And then all the question for us was, what are these high value services are? And we come to digital, at the time it was the cloud, but then we created this uh, IMAX acronym and said the digital is gonna be all about the digital journey for your and our clients. Accenture Interactive, Accenture Mobility, Accenture Analytics and Artificial Intelligence Now, Accenture Cloud and Accenture Cybersecurity for all the reasons. This is the way you could articulate the digital journey. And we decided in 12 to lead in this digital uh, environment uh, and to lead in each of the five. And which do, what do you, looking back, what was the mistake? What was the biggest mistake you made? Because everyone, when they make transformations, does to get one or two things wrong. They've even happened at Bloomberg occasionally. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, if you look at this, of course, if, if I, I understand the question and if I think yeah. deeply, you know, at the end of the day, today we have 60% of our revenues in the digital services. We created from scratch $23 billion in six years, fresh. Uh, we, we, uh, at the same time, we grew our business organic in the range of 7 to 8% mm. organic. We completed 100 acquisitions in five years. Uh, we uh, increased our margin. We have the best PE and TRS of our industry. And we have returned uh, tons of cash to our shareholders in form of dividend and share buyback. So is there something I, I, would, I would change? I would, have, I would have started maybe two years earlier. I'm quite, quite interested <laughs> on that. Why, why, why do, do, do you think that is, even in a country like, even in a company like yours, which is advising people to change, that there is always a resistance to change, especially if you're doing quite well in the first place. Is that true? No, it, it, it is true. But the point, and that's clearly the role of leaders mm. uh, and CEOs, is again to understand when the wave you've been surfing yes. is gone. And, and you have elements to see that. And these elements are the one I mentioned calling commoditization, is when you're starting to see you have no pricing power. Uh, your margin being squeezed. Instead, you, you're not investing enough in innovation and you're starting to cut your cost. And cutting your cost is not a strategy. It's an impediment, but it's not a strategy. Uh, the strategy is to innovate and create new services. So when you're starting to feel that, you know, you're looking at your cost more than innovation, uh, you're starting to 
cut your price and not pass value uh, to the market, and you won among many, and not the one different from the others, you're in deep shit. A technical, a technical term. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> or uh, a digital term. Um, but you are. <laughs> believe me, you are. But how does, uh, and, and now you have the AI challenge coming up. Yep. What, how do you think about that? Is, that? is that something which is going to mean replacing a lot of people with computers? What, what is actually going to happen? Yeah, I mean, it's always difficult to predict the future, but... Uh, Especially to Accenture at this stage. Uh, uh, yeah, no, no, uh, but uh, uh, do I believe that in the coming 10 years it's going to destroy all the job? Mm. I don't believe that a second. Not, n not a minute, not a second. Uh, so we uh, published a book uh, at Accenture called uh, uh, Human and the Machine. And we believe much more that we are about to reinvent the collaboration between the man and the machine. Now, we're moving to the next level of collaboration, because just take a very simple illustration. Uh, uh, we have deep collaboration. You certainly, in the morning, you're coming to your office, you open your laptop or yeah. something similar. So the man and the machine. Now the machine being a servant of the man. When you open the laptop, you're sending a request through all sorts of search mm -hmm. thing. You're launching the request. The big difference is when you're going to uh, open the laptop or not, the laptop or something called Alexia is going to talk to you. Yes. And going to uh, uh, propose, they're going to look at all the requests you've been making and say, OK, when you arrive to the office, you like to open uh, Bloomberg. So when you open your laptop, you have Bloomberg. Uh, you like to read these, uh, you know, the Economist, the FT, whatever, things like this. Boom, uh, you're opening that. You like to understand what happened in the stock exchange. You, you see what I mean. All of this is going to be given to you based on your pattern. It is the first element of AI. The second element of AI, which is pretty basic, is the laptop going to talk to you. So maybe at the beginning, <laughs> it might be surprising, but we're going to get all used to that and say, oh, my dear friend, uh, good morning. Uh, I hope you've been taking an umbrella because my forecast is it's going to rain the afternoon. We're calling that artificial intelligence. I mean, it's, it's absolutely basic, but it's part of artificial intelligence. So what I see is what we're going to see in the coming five years going to be the basic uh, applications of what we're calling AI. Yes, uh, some devices are going to speak. Uh, uh, they're going to think a bit. Yes. Uh, so uh, they're going to emulate the man in the way that they could see, they could speak, and they could think. So it's going to be pretty basic. Now, at the same time, as always, you will have the super sophisticated uh, use of AI, so which is going to scare everybody, and where the impact is going to be. This. But it's all about innovation. You see, you have waves. And our job with our clients and for Accenture is to understand where a wave of innovation is mature enough for what I would call prime time, uh, to scale and to provide benefit to, the society, to our clients or to the society at scale. Uh, and the horizon is probably five years, and then you're getting to a next level of sophistication. And, and, and that's the way it is. And when you look at that in terms of Accenture, if you apply AI to Accenture, does that mean in terms of people coming into work, services people coming to work, 100,000 people, that their jobs are going to change dramatically? I mean, every, yes. The answer is yes. But interesting at the time, we said there's not going to be a job. Every year we are recruiting 100,000 people at Accenture, mm. including now. Uh, that's the point uh, number one. Now, are they going to do the same thing than the predecessors? Absolutely not. Every year, we're spending $900 million in training and education for our own people. Close to a billion dollars in training and education for the Accenture people. To do what? To skill them in the new. Uh, we've been taking out 210,000 people in technology. And in three years, we retrained 70,000 plus 70,000 plus 70,000. In what? Agile. Not in the kind of super galactic stuff sometimes ba we're talking basic, about. Basic software. I mean, learning, we have a new development uh, architecture called MyWizard, where you have in the development platform, for the techie guys here, uh, you have the bots, 
uh, which are generated by the platform. It's just a new way of developing system. Do you, do you, do you, think, do you think this all Agile comes Agile development and all these techniques, which are the basic in the new, but again, they're not gonna replace 200,000 people. They might replace, indeed, through productivity, let's say 15%, yes. But if you have growth, you're gonna continue recruiting. Do you, do you, I noticed you have not done, you've done quite a lot of small acquisitions, but yeah. you haven't done the big ones, and I, I think I worked out that 3% of your top, 2% of your top line growth comes through that, but most of it comes organically. Does the advent of AI make you think about changing that, that actually this is something that you might need to go and buy something from outside, or can you see all the skills you need inside? Um, uh, I mean, we were not acquisitive at all at Accenture. So mm -hmm. our model, and probably many of you might know that, uh, if you engage with us, we recruit young people, we train, we grow, like me. I yeah. started 35 years ago from the ranks, I've been trained, da 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 da, -da and then uh, I became the, the chairman and CEO uh, uh, seven years ago, the classic stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, a normal career, yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, I mean, the normal thing. You're working hard, you're sweating a bit, and you're terribly lucky. Yes. I mean, talent without luck will not get you to CEO post. Yes. Uh, uh, luck gonna be critical. But uh, uh, if, you, e, 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 if you look at this now, what is different is the speed of change. Uh, in the past, when you had a revolution, it was, I mean, a revolution, if you take the, uh, I mean, the whatever, third industrial revolution, if you take this one, uh, it was more about, or even the second, uh, I mean, 50 years cycle. So the point in 50 year cycle, if you miss the first two years, it's okay. You, you still have 48 years to come back yeah. and maybe to succeed. When the waves are every 18 months, if you miss the first one, you're done. So you need, and some miss the first one, a lot around the B2C, for instance, what we did with interactive or, or, or some uh, cyber security. So you need to jump in the second one. But you have 18 months. And what you need to do now, which is very different, and you know that in that place, is you need to incubate. Incubating means understanding the opportunities. Develop use case. I understand the opportunities, but what are you gonna do with that? But what's the most important, and I think that's the big challenge for me and all of you, is how you scale. Because if it's remaining a good idea, you can't scale. A good idea you can't scale is a bad idea. Hmm. Not at the beginning, but after 12, 12 months, and after 18 months, it is, it is a disastrous idea. <laughs> so you need to understand and you need to scale fast. Otherwise, you miss the wave, because you can't be number one, and you need to jump in the next one. So speed is absolutely fundamental today. And in order to accelerate our transformation, we had to acquire. So we said we're gonna, uh, uh, we're gonna uh, put 30% uh, of free cash flow every year in acquisitions. We completed, as you said, 100 acquisitions in five years. We deployed 5 billion capital. Yes. Uh, so all of this was really uh, uh, well orchestrated and we will continue to do so. The point is, so far the acquisitions were a bit easier because if you take uh, now we're number one in digital agencies and experience agency with what we're calling Accenture Interactive, three years in a row uh, between six and seven billion dollars. But the market was there. So when we, uh, uh, Carmarama or companies like uh, Sino Schreider to mention some, uh, yes. London, uh, Germany, Altima in France, the market was a bit mature. When you're getting to cutting and leading age, uh, you're getting more to these startups than the, the, the mature. So we're looking at this more carefully. And so we pivot our strategy to continue being acquisitive, maybe where things are more mature, cloud, cybersecurity to some extent. But when you get to AI, we created what we're calling our open innovation program at Accenture. So we set a, a, a fund of $100 million per annum to invest and take small tickets in startups. And we have now a network of 5,000 startups around the world where Accenture is working with them as our R&D, if you will. Some we're gonna buy, some not. Uh, but we continue going to be acquisitive, but we need as well to significantly improve do you, our do you, ecosystem. Just turning a bit to, the, to your clients, does that, would you recommend that to other service firms or does that apply to manufacturing as well? Uh, 
No, I... it, 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 it does apply. I mean, you have some in this, rota let's call that rotation to the new, yes. Uh, we, I mean, we're calling that the new because frankly, I don't know what's gonna happen in, uh, uh, so rotation to the new is quite uh, durable in terms of concept. Because you, uh, you keep on, these startups you keep on. Give, you a, give you a view uh, on uh, the new. And it's giving the view for our clients, for our investors, yes. that at Accenture, we will never stop. We embark to lead in that new, whatever it is today and whatever it's gonna be uh, tomorrow. And we commit to bring to our clients the best possible innovation of today, what we're calling the next new uh, and the after next new, uh, where we're already uh, starting to work on uh, uh, quantum computing or quantum gate Right. Uh, a use case on biogenetic, where you can scan uh, the genotype and accelerate research vis a vis of the cancer. The, and there's the thing, your, your job is to be at the new. If I was running a, a, a more mundane business, I might regard all this, if you came and advised me to do this, I might think this is Accenture just trying to get me to do something. I'm happier just running yeah. my, so my, my, first, my double uh, manufacturing. When I'm going to engage with you, imagine you're my client and I'm yes. coming to you. I'm paying you slightly. And you're gonna pay me a fortune yes. <laughs> uh, in due course. Because th the more you're gonna pay me, the more I'm gonna be tough. If you're not paying me, I'm gonna be just complacent and nice. Yes. Because I'm gonna say you're not serious. Now, if you're serious <laughs> and prepared to pay, you're gonna start, you're gonna die. Uh, without your help, it's a very No, 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 yeah. whatever. <laughs> you yeah. might die even without help. Uh, yes. It, it's just gonna be more rapidly without. <laughs> yes. So with us, you, you have a chance to survive if you're doing the right thing. And, and I'm saying that you know, half joking and half seriously, uh, because all industries are disrupted. I mean, the very first one was the media industry. Yes. I mean, we, together with banking, the first were the digital industries, mm. media, banking, insurance, telco. So really the B2C. Then you have the consumer good and you have the retail. So we had the first wave of transformation around the B2C. Uh, and I mean, look at what happened with the telco as we speak. Yes. Massive consolidation, vertical, horizontal, the media are in the mix, banking, they're all going massively uh, digital. You have the FinTech and all that kind of thing. And I can mention many. Retail, what's gonna be the future of retail and the retailers? So you have the B2C. Uh, and now starting the B2B, so the manufacturing, which is gonna be the next wave, we're calling that industry zero, which is gonna be much bigger than what we've seen in B2C. So it's gonna be uh, the oil and gas, the utilities, uh, aerospace and defense, automotive. Uh, I think you will have Carlos Ghosn, and he will probably explain that his industry is gonna be massively transformed, and in the coming five years with the autonomous car and, and, and all what's gonna happen, the world of mobility uh, gonna change. So first you need to understand, which is what we did at Accenture in 11, we could die. If we are not moving out of our business, it's gonna be a slow death, but you know the destination. So when you figure out, and that's the point number one, awareness. It's all starting with a strong awareness of the leaders. Yes, I need to change. Then the question is to understand how these new technologies are gonna help. And we develop a methodology called wise pivot. So you need to pivot wisely. And to pivot wisely, you need to do three things. Uh, you need first to protect the core a bit. You can't go start up and things, otherwise your size is gonna be like this and you will need a microscope to see your future. Uh, so you need to transform the core, which I think the media have been doing a lot, putting the online yes. thing and so forth. So it was the very beginning of the transformation. So you need to uh, transform the core, then you need to grow your core I mean, look now, some digital uh, publishing are, be are becoming yes. bigger than the rest. And then you need to understand the wise pivot to the most advanced technologies. The big mistake we're telling the clients is you believe that digital transformation is about quantum computing. No, no, no. Bring innovation at the core. Protect as much as you could and have differentiation. And you could do a lot of things. Robotic process automation. RPA is the bread and butter of today, the productivity of any company in the world. You know, you're not sending a rocket to Mars, I mean, you're just doing what you have to do. And then you need to very selectively say, okay, now I'm gonna look at artificial intelligence. What does it mean for me here and now? And then you need to look at the different chapters. 
uh, do I need in publishing uh, 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 a device, a car, maybe Carlos Ghosn mentioned that because it was part, yes. that you're in the car, you're not driving the car, you will have the news. And who would like to push a button to watch the news in a car? You're Nobody. Gonna, so you're going to you, discuss you, with your car and say, by the way, I would like to have the latest uh, Bloomberg view on the markets uh, blah, blah, blah. and the car. I'm going to talk to you. I can, I can see why you're such a persuasive salesman to people, but, the, but the, on the end, and, and it's a great idea that everybody should jump into a car and just listen to Bloomberg. Can I ask you one, one and I urge all of you For to do free. that rapidly. For, For free. No, I think strangely, thanks, thanks to- Have you mentioning Bloomberg how many times? <laughs> yeah, yes, that's true, without, <laughs> without anything. But I wanted to ask you one very quick last yeah. one, which is just because you're an interesting thing. You're, you're a French guy who's run a big, many would think American, but, but a global digital thing. Something seems to be happening in Paris at the moment. Can you just put that in context? How do you, is Paris has suddenly, in the past couple of years, there's obviously been political change. Why is Paris suddenly becoming more central to technology? And obviously you I mean, you have a couple of, of things, and tomorrow I will have the privilege to be with many of my colleagues yeah. uh, uh, at the Elysee and at the Matignon yes. on this uh, Tech for Good uh, uh, initiative. I think there's three things. Uh, I mean, the first, let's take the basic. The French are incredibly smart. <laughs> okay, with this. <laughs> right? The, the English are laughing, but yes, keep. <laughs> the, I mean, the English people have been trying to mimic the French for... No, we, we will keep going. A <laughs> few hundred years. <laughs> Getting very close, to we be honest. We, we took the good ones back but, in 1066. Uh, no, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but what do I mean? Yeah. We have a long tradition of engineering, science, mathematics. That is, that is a yes. true thing, UK as well. But, you know, Polytechnic, I mean, you can mention yes, the names of this university. It is well known. And the first Accenture labs, we have seven labs where we are developing. The first lab Accenture developed 25 years ago was in Sofia Antipolis, not in the US. Yes. Because they believe that that was where you have this combination of France is perceived as being creative, because creativity is creating innovation. You're not innovative without being creative. Creative, innovative, and having something between the ears. You can call the brain. So, not all, yes. <laughs> but a small group. And, and you know, uh, the head of R&D at Accenture is a French, and I didn't select him, Marc Arelbia. If you're going to, I think, the Facebook, the head of artificial intelligence, or close to the head, is a French. If you're going to Microsoft, you will see a lot of French. So that's point number one. Now, point number one, if you have the talent without the political and business context would be what uh, a British meal without a French wine. <laughs> uh, very good. But you say, I, I missed something. Yes. What we missed for 30 years is a pro-business government. Is a government first embracing a pro-business agenda, but it's not enough because many of our governments have been embracing the pro-business of the past. They wanted to recreate the factories. They wanted to reopen mine. They wanted to recreate the job of 50 years ago. A, a good mining guy, this is what we need to recreate. I mean, not stupid. So our president is not only pro-business, but he's pro-business in the new. He got it. So that is the point uh, number two. Uh, so we have the brain trust, we have a, 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 a pro-business uh, uh, government, and we have a market. Why the companies are here? No, I mean, not only because they love the French, they love our brand, they love Emmanuel Macron, or they love the French wine. They love our 60 million people. They love our uh, uh, two trillion euro uh, GDP. We're incredibly rich, despite the fact our government for the last 30 years tried to make us poor, <laughs> and almost succeeded, because they did everything they could to kill our economy through tax, through regulation, uh, creating a state almost communist. So now we're pivoting after 30 years. So it's, it's, it's good news, but Emmanuel Macron, and he does know that, is at the very beginning of what I would call the wise pivot. So France had two possibilities at the crossroad. Got it wrong or got it right? 
We got it right, but we're at the beginning of the road and the destination is over there. And we, I'm supporting a lot Emmanuel Macron. Uh, we're supporting a lot because it's hard to be pro-business in that country, uh, which has not been in our DNA since our whatever, revolution and so forth. So that is a very good, that's a very good place to finish. Can we all give a, a warm round of applause to Pierre? And I love the Brits. <laughs> Um, I, I'm going to thank. I'm going to briefly give you some housekeeping just for a second, which is um, thank you all for joining us uh, for this opening night program. Again, thank you very much to Accenture. Thank you very much to Force Point and Lufthansa for making this event possible. We're going to see you all tomorrow at 9 a.m. for a full day of interviews and panel discussions focused on cybersecurity, which you've just heard a bit about, the Internet of Things, and artificial intelligence. Um, there is food and drinks upstairs or you go up through the back um, please go there and don't forget to come back down here for the premiere at 7.30 of Hello World Ashley Vance I think is here somewhere at the front um, to tell you about it but we will come back at 7.30 to watch that thank you all very very much merci beaucoup love that <laughs>